catch you on the rebound. We back in the building. I got two special guests up in the place to be. We got uh, Marlon Cross from London, England, and Andrew Powell, known as AP. Yes, sir. In the place to be. All right. So, um, Marlon, you're from London. Um, tell us what uh, – what London means to you? Obviously, we spoke a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. To most people uh, from America, um, London is just you know another country where they speak English, yeah. and uh, that's kind of all they know about it. They know a few of the artists, and uh, that's really it. Mm -hmm. What does London mean to you? Uh, I'll say um, London is just it's it's like America, but with a different accent. Okay. Like uh, it's I mean it's, it has its own similarities and its own differences, but it's a. Uh, I, I think people mistake it for tea and crumpets and Buckingham Palace and all that. Yeah. It's, it, it has its places as well, just like everywhere else. So. Got it. It's it's you, it, it's maybe the man I am today, and you know I am the way I am. I've got to where I am today because of the way I was brought up. So. Yeah. Definitely, we can get into that though. Got it. Yeah. AP. Sir. Born in Dallas. Yes, sir. But you moved around a lot. A lot, man. You moved around. Tell us about your childhood. Man, um, you know, I would see my mom. She's uh, she was from Trinidad, so she came here to go to Bible school. Okay. Uh, my dad was originally from Queens, so they met in school out here. So, man, long story short, I probably moved like between 10, 12, 13 times mm. for uh, graduating high school. So, uh, yeah, I was born in Dallas. I lived in Chicago, Arizona, Wisconsin, everywhere. I moved to Seattle about in the eighth grade. So, yeah. for me, you know, growing up was a little rough at the time, but... I was exposed to a lot. So now I can kind of, you know, very easily, you know, find things in common with different people. Okay. You know? So I think it helped me grow as a person and just be, you know, multifaceted a little bit. So Okay. So I want to give everybody everybody in the studio, like, the the floor at any time. Like, if y'all feel something that just hits y'all, like, speak up, you know what I'm saying, and say it. If, if I ask him something and, it, like, it, it hits you, just say something. Mm -hmm. So, like, obviously, like, we all, us three, we went to Tech. Mm -hmm. Right, guns up, guns up, hey, tech, man. guns up, baby. <laughs> we went to tech, and here we are in Dallas, and we link back up at the ladder. What does the ladder mean to you guys, man? The ladder, the biggest thing I would say is shout out know, to AJ, shout out to AJ, yeah, man, for real. big shout yeah. out to AJ Washington. Yep. Um, the big thing I would say it's kind of self-explanatory is just taking those steps up the ladder to being who you are and your purpose and. Mm -hmm. Know, sometimes in that process you might slip you might make a step but you know we have a it's almost like a family feel so there's always people that you know motivating as you're going up kind of showing you there's somebody ahead of you showing your direction there's also people you know you take a slip help push you up so to me man it's all about growth moving closer to the purpose you know yeah. so of course it's very spiritually involved and you know our walk in Christ and whatnot but um yeah. I think it's really just taking that step towards our purpose got it yeah for me it's just it's a brotherhood it's yeah. um it's, it's something that I, I feel like not a lot of young professionals or even young African Americans kind of have that True. that safe place that you can just talk about anything. True. And it's a it's more of a support system as well, True. because like AP was alluding to, you know, we keep each other accountable and yeah. we have anything, anything you want to talk about with any of your brothers, you're more than welcome to bring it up. So yeah, I feel like that's, that's AJ's doing big things with that man. For sure. He is man. I can't I can't wait to have him on the show. Um, yeah, so. Today the topic in the ladder was uh, change, uh -huh. and uh, I just I just told you guys like right right before we started, I got released. Um, I've been playing basketball since I was five, six, seven years old, and now I'm at this point to where, you know, I may just want to do something different. You know, it just this just may be the change in my life that I needed, and I just feel that in my life. Um, having you guys around, having the ladder being able to speak and get these things off my chest and the positive reinforcement that I get from you guys keeps me going. Um, because for sure I had a, you know, a depressed point, you know, where I was just down. Sometimes stress just hit me out of nowhere. Um, and I can't really explain it, but having that, uh, having a ladder, being able to text the group or just hear what the group is talking about, um, just that positive reinforcement just keeps me going. You know what I'm saying? So, we're gonna kind of uh, we're kind of kind of change things up a little bit. I sent you guys both a quote, mm -hmm. and I asked you about it earlier, but I'm gonna flip the script. So you chose B 
be still in your mind but move in your body mm-hmm. what does that mean to you uh for me if you uh, i guess the easiest way to put it is i feel like i mean there's there's also another element to it which is spiritual right to right. remind your body your spirit yep. and i feel like if you're not synced up with all three of them mm-hmm. then you're just you're not going to head to where you need to head to Got it. so when you're saying you know be still in your mind move your body I, I feel that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you do have to have a place of peace as well, but on the same side, you have to move in unison. Mm-hmm. You have to move in the spirit. Yeah. So if my if my mind is telling me, or if the spirit is telling me, don't do this, my mind is telling me, don't do this, but my body is telling me, do this yeah. while I'm doing it, yeah. and you're out of sync, you have to align yourself with all three. So that's what I got from the quote. It wasn't exactly what it was, but yeah. from my perspective. I like that, man. And I, like... That's not my quote. Like I took that from uh, KRS One. Just like I take uh, any any gems. Like if I hear it from you guys, and I and it really just applies to my life. Like I'm I'm gonna write that John down. Like I need it. AP, you chose once you determine what you're gonna do. Don't worry about where it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Is that is that a testament to you moving around a lot in your childhood, or just kind of like? I think that man, my life. A lot of things in life, man. That's that's a big part of it too, yeah. um, because I didn't have a lot of a lot of consistency. So yeah. things worked out perfect. I mean, the high school I went to was a good high school. Went to tech. The major I ended up doing wasn't a major I planned to do originally. Where I yeah. worked, I wanted to do everything but sales. But you know, since I've yeah. been doing sales, it's been the best things that ever happened to me. Okay. Um, so I think it's just life in general. Just understand that look. You know, experiences that happen to you are, are unscripted. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, you know, God's got a plan. So. You can ask him for a bottle of water. He might not give you a bottle. He might give you a pitcher. Yeah, you're still gonna get water. Still gonna drink. You know. I like so, that. It's definitely I like that a lot. It's definitely <laughs> favor for sure, man. You know, and one, and one quick thing too, man. Um, yeah. You know, just go back to what you just said. Uh, you know, getting released. Um, mm-hmm. You're pretty transparent about it. Yeah. But I won't lie to you, man. Watching how you handled it and how you've just taken that energy and that time and the resources and put in other places, yeah. that was inspiring to me because I was like, man, he went through a pretty major change, yeah. and. You know, you went through some stuff and you're still dealing with it, but like the yeah. way you've done it, been poised. I mean, that made me rethink what I'm going through because there's some things I probably complained about that I shouldn't be complaining about. Exactly. So Appreciate props that. to you, man, for sure. Well, so when I was a kid, I remember I would literally run. I would literally run away. I would just run away from my problems, you know, like hide in my room, just in a shell almost, you know, like I'm not coming out of my room. I'm just going to go in here, play my video game, put my headphones on, and just like act like this didn't even happen, like it doesn't even exist. And then um, it the change really happened in my life when I learned how to swim. As weird as that sounds, I, I didn't learn how to swim until recently, I was right? 25. I remember seeing oh, a wow. picture on Instagram. Uh, the SMU <laughs> swim coach, like I knew his wife, she introduced me, and he taught me how to swim in two weeks. Wow. And uh, just like not being able how to swim had like really had this hold over me my whole life. Like I never played in like the swimming pools when I was a kid. Like yeah, really. never. I never went to like the, I didn't like uh, NRH2O. Hurricane Harbor, none of that. I couldn't <laughs> swim. Like I was really afraid that I would like lose my life. And when I learned how to swim, just like the barrier was no longer there. Uh, I like I started to like jump in the ocean, and I would just go swim like whenever. And, and that just gave me like a, I don't want to say like invincibility, but like just fear doesn't really exist unless we like allow it to. You know what I mean? It's just it's literally like something that only exists in our mind. And when I was able to get over that, like. Anything that I'm afraid of, whether it's like like getting released, mm-hmm. I told so many people, yeah. Like I have been telling the group, I have been yeah. telling the latter for like I don't know how long, and when it just happened, I was like, wow. I told all these people, mm-hmm. and now I gotta go and tell them again. I gotta go face the fact that like I let them down. You know what I mean? That's what you say thought. That. I mean, that's uh, obviously you know that's not what it was. You didn't yeah. let people down, but yeah. I mean, I get what you, I get what you're saying though. You know what I mean? That's yeah. crazy because you saying that, I can think of instances in my life where I've done the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like you told people, you've built up, you know, hype and momentum, and then it doesn't go the right way, and you're just like, let me just, you know, go into the back cave. Yeah. Instead of owning up to it. That's, a, you know, that's real. Yeah. Huh? I did. I did. It's going to work in your favor, definitely. Yeah. You know, Every one door closes, the door opens, opens, bigger door opens. Yep. Yep. So you guys do, you're in sales, obviously, uh, you're in finance. You guys happy with what you're doing? Or are you looking for the future? Um, this is so. This is also just for the listeners out there that don't necessarily know exactly the 
type of sales that you do or finance. Like, they're just jobs that they're not familiar with. Yeah. So, you know, give them just kind of a little bit and just, like, what makes you want to do it, what makes you want to go into work every day, like, kind of like how you feed off of it. So, so for me, man, background. Like, so for one, I work for a tire company. Yeah, so good year. A pretty, yeah, good year. So it's a yeah. pretty unique Niche, there's only a couple tire companies in you know, Bridgestone, Michelin, Goodyear. Uh, Most of them own the rest of them. I'm a niche guy. <laughs> uh, I'm a niche guy. You know, man? So, yeah. so for me, you know, when I was graduating, I wanted to do supply chain, mm-hmm. but I was always good at sales. And then um, opportunity took its place, talked to God about it, seemed the right decision to make. And, um, I mean, I've lived in different places. I've traveled the country yeah. with them. Um, so as far as sticking with it, I like the capacity of what I'm doing. Okay. They're still giving me more responsibilities, um, supporting me going to school and whatnot. So for now, I'm very happy. I feel blessed. You know, just moving forward, I know that I'm getting a lot of transferable skills. So okay. I really want to be able to amplify what I'm doing in my reach. You know what I mean? And just okay. more responsibility, thing like that. So okay. I love it, man. I can't complain. I work from home. Mm. You know what I mean? They give me a work car. So it's a lot of a lot of mm. blessings that have come my way that were, they were timely. Okay. Very timely. You know what I mean? A lot of benefits. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, man. So it's cool. Sometimes a little frustrating, you know. Okay, it's, it's not the industry that I thought I'd be in. It's yeah. a little more blue collar than I thought it, but yeah, it's worked out, man. It's cool. What industry did you want to be in? Man, I want to be, you know, flashy, you know, <laughs> yeah. software sales, you yeah. know, and pull up to the C-suite. <laughs> you know, and this crazy thing is like, I'll be dealing with a customer, and I'll spend nine months on a truck yard where there might be a chicken coop company, and it stinks. And then the right. last meetings with the owner, and I'm, you know, he got a three piece button suit. You know, put yeah. up to the meeting in a Lambo, so got it. It's cool, you know, but I, I like it though. Saying. I like it. I like it, man. I can't complain. Got it. Yeah, mine's uh finance slash technology. Um, okay. I didn't think I was gonna be doing that at all. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, I came here, ran track, and did football. Mm. I thought that was where it was gonna go. Athlete. Yeah. But you know, I was athlete. 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 You know what I'm saying athlete. And then uh, you know, my dad kind of sat me down and was like, look. What are you doing? What are you going to do with yourself? At that time, I was a sociology major. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I, you know, I was like, okay, let me switch over to finance, see what that's about. Yeah. And then uh, one day the, the, one of the professors was like, you know, we'd love to have for you the master's program for accounting. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, cool, I'll do that. So ended up getting my master's, went to Deloitte. And, there, and if anyone knows anything about Big Four, I'm sure there's some corporate people, man, it's a grind. Yeah, it's a grind, man. You're you're putting in sixty, eighty hour weeks, hundred hour weeks, maybe. Wow. Busy seasons, crazy. It's just it's a grind. So, yeah. um, it was a grind, but I'm thankful, uh, thankful for the experience for sure. Yeah. So yeah. right now I'm doing finance technology at AT and T in Dallas. So you know you're doing something right when they ask you to come into their program. You know? Oh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I was. I mean, I'm, I'm a. I, I, everyone that's been to tech and you know you know that tech is for me. What I believe is tech is a grinder school. Yeah. Like you're not UT, you're not yeah. A&M or whatever. You kind of, you, you get, you build that work ethic because you're like, everyone assumes you're the baby brother of the big 12 or whatever, you know what really? I'm saying? So when you show That's people, like, it's, it's, That's it's, true. It's, it's a good feeling when I outwork Stop someone. Stop hating on tech, UT. man. Exactly. And I recruit, right? So we recruit yeah. at tech and don't recruit at UT, you know, the other big schools for the reason that we know that tech has a work ethic. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Everywhere you go, you know that tech people always outperform people. They might not be the smartest, but they're the most hardworking every single time. Nah, we're, we're the smartest, too. And the smartest. Hey, man. <laughs> Red Raiders, I don't want to too much. Yeah, Red Raiders, man. Um, AP, you want to do some economic development? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. I mean, as far as my purpose and my calling, you know, okay. and the good thing about the ladders is, you know, nobody's going to let you slide. You're not. Yeah. Stoney, Dom, Marlon, nobody's going to let me just, you know, go to work and come home, so... Um, what I really want to be able to do, man, moving forward and, you know, in the future is be able to work on projects in areas that are, you know, people that don't have the opportunity, you know, like yeah. for instance, you can go to countries in the Caribbean, Africa, whatever it is. Right. And there's a huge pool of young people that are smart. Yeah. They just don't have the opportunities. Now there's a lot of reasons why it doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, but I really want to be involved in that. I want to be a businessman the rest of my life. Got it. Um, but while doing business, I want to be a philanthropist as well. So Got it. if I can do what I want to do in the business world and involve other people yeah. as far as well as them, you know, if that's having training camps or having them as interns and them get them skills to go back into the world. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of people that can provide for themselves that don't have the opportunity yet. True. So that's what I want to do, man. That's like if I'm that. doing that, I can die happy. I like die that. happy. 
What is that for you, Marlon? What what what's one thing? I mean, he took it to the extreme. Like, <laughs> yeah, die die happy. Happy. <laughs> now I have to one up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You don't have to. You don't have to one up. I want to add world hunger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, it's just I, I know I will briefly talked about it with you, yeah. but it's just owning my own consulting firm. Yeah. Uh, I want to be my own boss. Okay. I feel like you know I've acquired a lot of knowledge over the years, and okay. you know I'm I'm very. I'm in a unique space where I know accounting, I know technology, and I want to kind of merge those two together. Okay. On my, open my own consulting firm, and just to kind of piggyback off what you said, I went to the Dominican Republic like two years ago. Yeah. So for Thanksgiving, uh, my uncle's out there, mm -hmm. and so he lives in a hood. Like it's not it's not the nice uh, Santo Domingo and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So as we were going out there to these different uh, shops or corner stores or just different small businesses, I saw they didn't right. really have an accounting software. Okay. Like they didn't have anything for their budgets and stuff like that. So okay. I kind of want to piggyback off of that and just, you know, mm. got stuff in the work already. So nice, yeah. man. Well, like I'm, I'm living my dream right now. This is a part of it. Like I, I want, I want to have my own show, uh, literally like talk show, like, um, Jimmy Fallon, Arsenio okay. Hall, something like that. And, uh, you guys are helping me live that dream right now. So, uh, thank y'all. Ladder. 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 There you go. Yeah. Oh, Okay. You can only heal what you reveal, right? You can only heal what you reveal. Hey, P. Tucker, in. That too deep for you? Nah, it's deep. It's perfectly deep, man. It's, it's good. Is it? It's, it's real, man. I mean, yeah. you know, especially when you start to get a little older, like things yeah. move a little slower for you, okay. especially if you're growing. So you kind of see how many things you just put Band-Aids on when you were younger. Yeah. And if we had just faced it and been humble, been poised, yeah, man, I'd be in a better place than I am now. Now it's, yeah. everything's God's timing, so I'm not complaining. I'm, you know, I'm happy with everything, but yeah, man, there's just so many things, especially us as like men. Yeah, we're just so invincible, Superman. You know, sculpted that we don't want to really come to terms with things and talk about things. So cover it up, keep yeah. going. You know, and it, it yep. just holds you back. And I, I feel it doesn't, it doesn't really become a reality until you reveal it to yourself. Yeah, too. right. Yeah, and that's when you are allowed to, you, you then allow yourself to kind of attack it. So. Yeah. That's, that's a good quote though. Yeah. I like that one. And I, yeah. I think I think I think a lot of people, man. I think a lot of people like, you know, when you see people who have a midlife crisis from like forty five, fifty. Yeah. I think it's just like there's things that it just never took a, took took care it's of. Eating them up. And the cover it up was part of the ego and pride, and it just stacks up, stacks up, and you got a hundred pound weight in your head, and it's just yeah. it's crash, you know. Yep. Uh, well, my crash was. Uh, I had all that anger and that ego with my dad. Whenever I was at Tech, he called me. He's like, man, he just wanted to talk. He just wanted to know, like, whatever I was doing, what was going on in my life. I, whatever was going on in my life, I thought it was more important than talking to my dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I told him I would call him back, and that next day he died. And so I, so that, that bomb just, like, dropped mm -hmm. on me. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't really know where to turn. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I definitely went down the wrong route. Drugs, sex, uh, alcohol, whatever. Whatever would just numb it. Just take that thought, that pain off of my head. Um, and my trainer, shout out to Keith Garnett, um, he set me up with a therapist. Her name was Sheila. And uh, that was the first person that I was ever able to really like talk to about it to, to begin. Uh, I went home for a little bit, uh, but I wasn't as open as I was, so I didn't really want to talk to my mom or anybody like that. Knowing that I could have, you know, I just yeah, I just needed to talk to somebody else. But I I, I spoke to Sheila, and uh, that's where it started. And I tra obviously I transferred from Tech. I went to SMU, mm -hmm. um, and I was smoking weed at SMU. I'm just gonna be completely honest. I was smoking weed, end up getting it dirty. And uh, I had to speak to another therapist about that. And within that, so those were two individual therapists. Mm -hmm. But eventually they just made it a group thing. So there was a couple football players and a couple basketball players. So some of it was drugs and alcohol and then some of it was just guys needed somebody to talk to. But that was my first time at group therapy. Mm -hmm. um, group versus individual. What do you guys feel like is better? Just uh, kind of like how we do at the ladder, or do you guys kind of prefer like just individually talking to somebody one on one? 
about like the issues and the problems? I feel like it's, a, it's a mixture of both. Okay. Because uh, I feel like there's certain issues that you don't, you don't, you can't, you can't really bounce off people immediately because yeah. you, you need to learn how to articulate it as well. Yeah. So if you're talking to someone you trust, you can kind of speak to them. Like AJ is someone that I confide in for almost everything. Got it. So I feel like when I talk to him first, I can kind of make sense of the situation. And then I can bring it out to a general group and see what else everyone thinks. True. So, but I mean, it, it, they both have their advantages, right? Like, yeah. the more ideas, the more heads you have in a room, the more better responses or the more responses you're going to get. True. But then if you're one-on-one -on -one with someone, they tend to be more authentic with true. you. And I'm not saying any, like every, the, everyone is authentic. Trust me, at the last, everyone gets it all <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, that's true. So, but I'm just saying in different situations, man, that's, that's how I view it. True. Yeah. Um, for me personally... I think that group therapy makes me grow because I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Now, if anybody knows me, I'm a outgoing person, but I'm really an introvert, so I don't really know you. Might mm. not talk. I might come off like I'm just standoffish, but gotcha. I'm just kind of introverted. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, group for me, group therapy, like you said, you hear a lot of things and it makes you think, right? You listen to other people communicate. I'm yeah. sitting in my head like, okay, you went through the same thing. I'm, I'm more comfortable saying it. Um, I think that's a big one. When yeah. when someone's going through the same thing you're going yeah. through, that that, yeah. that that hit it on the head. Man, I thought yeah. I was the only person going through a million things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I thought I was like true. the ugly yeah. duck in the corner. You know, yeah, like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man. You know, but um, individual therapy is good too, though. But I think, like for for me personally, I needed to um, kind of understand how to communicate what's going on in a yep. short sentence when it's individual. Because I don't want to be sitting here just rambling and then like I leave and it's like, oh, he probably thinks I'm crazy. Because yeah. I was all over the place. But now that I kind of understand how to explain and communicate what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, now I think both are good. But I, I'd probably say group. Yeah. I, I enjoy group. If I trust them. Uh, yeah. If you trust them. <laughs> if I don't trust them, <laughs> I'm going to be the ugly duck in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> great, man. Great. Okay, so we uh we spoke about kind of like what, you, what other passions that you guys had. And, uh, I mean, we're just going to put it on the spot, man. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Like. <laughs> Obviously, like you said, you wanted to kind of be like an A and R behind mm -hmm. the board <laughs> with the music scene. Mm -hmm. Marlon, you were a rapper, DJ, rapper, and a DJ. So maybe we can get a mixtape. <laughs> maybe we can get a mixtape. Hey, uh, tried to sign him five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I need to come back with a better so offer." There you, you go. Know. You know, speak to my people. Let's speak, speak to, to yeah. people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but no, man. Seriously, uh, music has always been a form of therapy. Oh, yeah. and, uh, for me, my family, we had family reunions. You know, I just remember like. Uh, Marvin Gaye and stuff like that just being blasted and when that music was played kind of everybody's mood kind of changed Definitely. and um music now is kind of different you know what I'm saying I appreciate it because there's some great artists right now but it's nothing like the the music from the past it mm -hmm. just puts you in a in a different place huh <laughs> ain't no cookout music <laughs> ain't no ain't no cookout music uh um, Tish, shout out to no, Tiller music is is, is <laughs> People yeah. don't realize how big music is in their lives, just yeah. for everyone. Because, I mean, do you ever get like whenever you hear a song, you just remember a certain oh, period in your yeah, life? Yeah, definitely, uh, bro. That happens to me all the time, man. And yeah. like, I grew up with um, with a lot of different cousins and stuff, and they were all older. Okay. So growing up, I used to hear Tupac. I used to hear all that kind of stuff, and that's just mm -hmm. what I identify with. And so like. It's just funny, man. It just brings back good times when I heard California Love or <laughs> Thug Mansion or something like that and stuff like that. So, no, it's, it's funny. And then another thing about music is that um, it's, it's uh, how, how do I explain it? You go and I'll, 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 I'll articulate. I'll, I'll figure out how to articulate it, Bill. Man, yeah. so, man, I played like four, three, four different instruments growing up. Wow. Made beats and started making beats in high school, made beats in college. I sold a couple, too. Self-talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, All I'm, instruments, man, like everything. I was a nerd. I just got away with it. <laughs> playing sports. I was a cool nerd, but I was a nerd, yeah. man. So I come home, do my homework, and then yeah. I wasn't playing outside or something. I'd be in my room. I wasn't hooping. I'd yeah. be in my room making beats, sampling everything. That was my senior project in high school. Really? Yeah, man. Um, but um, you know, I think music's crazy because you think about it, right? Um, I don't like bringing up slavery because a lot of Black history and hey, slavery is a little piece of it. And it's recent, but. This is a they had judgment 15, podcast. 20 different. Yeah, I know, I know. But like, you know, <laughs> you think about it. They had, they mixed up tribes on purpose when they came to America, right? Yeah. They couldn't talk, you know, part of 15 different dialects. What they could do, though, they could share music. Mm. If it was a hymn, if it was whatever. So a lot of music they listen to now was birthed because people were together. They had a lot of commonalities, but 
Mm. They better make music, hymns, whatever it was. Like music got people through oh, yeah. everything. All oh, stages, yeah. you know. So oh, yeah. that's I think tough, that's crazy, man. man. But like me, man, you listen to some Black Star, Most Deaf, Tyler Ooh. Quali, some con- some old school some Common. Conscious man, substance. Man, my favorite song <laughs> ever is "I Used to Love Her" by Common. Okay, that's my favorite song of all time. Yeah, that song is just man. Like you hear the song, you can Broke like you feel like you're in the booth together. with them. <laughs> <laughs> to get it back, I had to sweat it. Yeah, you, 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 you feel like you're in the booth, and it's like triple entendres in that song. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay. Crazy, I like that. So, crazy, so what I was gonna say about music. Do you, what kind of genres does everyone listen to? Is it just R and B and hip hop? Is man. it R and B? Like everything. Really. Everything. Man, you know. I had Trini, so I like a lot of dancehall, Popcon, mm. uh, Calypso, reggae. Man, I could listen to Burner Bob, Boy. Burner Boy, I like, I like, I like Afro. A lot of Afro yeah. beats. It almost sounds yeah. like dancehall yeah. sometimes. Video, you know? Yeah. Um, of course, you know I got a little trap section. Yeah. <laughs> Apple, you know, maybe a big trap section. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know, I'm working out. Like I like motivational music, so mm-hmm. yeah. listen to some Young Dolph. Dolph. You know, it's, that's that's uh-huh. let's get money music. That's you know, get up yeah. and get it. Get up and get it. So. Yeah. Straight up, yeah, that's why yeah. I was like, yeah, you have to be versatile, man. Because uh, yeah. people, people that listen to music or they don't listen to other genres, like you're not getting the full experience, man. Because oh, no. there's like I listen to, and when I mean everything, I listen to everything. Yeah, classic music, rock music. You listen to Britney Spears? Except for Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really no. the, the, the. I don't sleep on her. Though, <laughs> you, I know she has some jams, like you yeah. know what I'm saying. Katy but, like, Perry. Nah, no, I'm done. I'm like, I'm like, like a. Rage Against the Machines. Have you heard of them? Look, bro, I was in a band. So, so you, I, loved, uh, I loved that one spot when I lived in okay. Wisconsin for a year and a half. Me and my friends, we had a band, man. Actually, I think I was. Are you in a band? I mean, I played bass guitar starting in fourth grade. So, he was a drummer. I played bass. We had an electric guy. Yeah, bro. I had, every time I moved, it was like a different episode of life. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I was a rock star. Bro. Then I was a. Wow. I was, a music, I was uh, London on the track. So. <laughs> 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 Wow, man. So, okay, me and Marlon were speaking about that. So you said, like, every time you move, it's, like, a, a different life for you. Yeah. Um, we just spoke about, like, living different lives. And, like, yeah. in the latter, we spoke about, like, outgrowing, mm-hmm. like, a certain life mm-hmm. that you have. I feel like we can all attest to just being young, just wanting to go to parties, wanting to get lit, just wanting to just be out on the scene, like, mm-hmm. all the time. Like, mm-hmm. anytime it's an opportunity, just wanting to be out there, like, what like where where do you feel like in your lives you kind of realize like okay like I got stuff to accomplish and like that's not going anywhere you know what I mean like that's always gonna be there you know what I mean and like I don't want to seem like I'm like downplaying it but it's like like kind of the, the stuff that y'all saying like you said economic development like this dude is in finance and tech like obviously we know what Dom doing you know what Stony doing like yeah. we got work to do yeah. you know what I'm saying like yeah. and that's not that's not going anywhere yeah. like the turn up scene ain't going nowhere, nowhere. you know what I'm saying man, um, man, I was with you man I didn't really drink in high school really yeah I was oh, like so and it good. wasn't it wasn't even like I was afraid of getting in trouble I was just yeah. you know, I was kind of introverted more too then I just had a lot of friends and everybody but like mm-hmm. I don't know man it just wasn't appealing as appealing to me you know okay. what I mean um I'm a late bloomer in life too, though, so I don't really, I didn't really start that till. So glad you said that. Yeah, I probably started till I was like a sophomore, junior in college. Yeah. So I feel like I was on track, and then I made mean, that I kind of fell off and got back off. Oh, <laughs> we're being, being honest. We all do. Yeah. As we all do. I, I, I had a really good 21 year start. And then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fell the train tracks, you know what I mean? And, you know, got back on. So yeah. Yeah. I'm the opposite. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been drinking them. Like, I remember my first bottle of wine. Like, we uh, chugged it just to get drunk. It was like 13 years old. That's yeah. that British life, right? Yeah. And I, and I went to my first rave, <laughs> like, over 21 rave when I was 14. What? 14. 14 years old. I was old. watching yeah. anime when I was 14. Yeah. <laughs> I was on the scene. Like, and, like, that. that's what played a part in the whole DJ slash rapid thing. Like, okay. I was just, I grew up around that a lot. So, yeah. It, you learn a lot of stuff, though. You learn a lot of stuff early in life, for sure. But it was sure. fun, man. I, I was watching Goku you. fight Frieza for 10 episodes. <laughs> Dragon Ball on, on Namek. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> I was yeah. watching the Power Up for 10, for 10 episodes. Ten episodes. <laughs> 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 episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Yeah. I never watched Dragon Ball Z, oh, man. Hey, it's bro. never too late, my brother. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's coming bro. to Netflix, right? Yeah, it's coming to Netflix. Bro. Okay. Watch it all, bro. Bro, yeah, hard. funny. I don't care There's a couple websites. I'm gonna have a password for you, man. You need to catch it. Yeah. <laughs> One punch. I still watch anime. One, One punch, punch man. man. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. I, I like I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Uh, 
Hey, man, I'm, I'm glad you guys are here, man. Uh, so I, I, I also want to give you guys the floor. Like some, like some of the things, like the thing you said about like slavery and the 15 different dialects of language and people not being able to understand uh, each other. I feel like it's a lot of that going on, and we all speak the same language. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, which master do we serve? Mm -hmm. That's what everybody is. Like, Killer Mike said that. And like, Killer Mike is somebody who I just, like, almost everything he says, bro, I'm, I'm just with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, this is just a person that I just can't really uh, combat against. Yeah. But um, we all speak the same language, but we don't really, we all don't really understand each other. You know what I mean? Like, we're talking about that at lunch today. Yeah. We don't. Yeah, because we, we were talking about, because um, I, I said, you know, I've been in corporate America for the, what, four and a half, five years. Yeah. And I feel like black people don't even speak to each other in the office. Okay. And it's weird because you would think that's the one place that, you know, there's, you're the mi you're truly the minority there. Yeah. You think they stick together, but it's almost as if it's always a competition. Okay. So I, I know you were going to get into that, but that, was, that <coughs> was just like a side note that I wanted yeah. to. Let me, let me, let me. Break it consolidate down. my answer because <laughs> yeah. that lunch was like 30 minutes long. Was <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, feel free, man. We got time. Uh, now, the biggest thing I would say, man, is that, you know, you know, specifically us as like black people, African descent, yeah. you know, the only way they're able to, you know, conquer us for the last whatever, you know, couple years, 100 years, whatever, was because they split us and put us against each other. So mm. if it's on plantations or how they did Africa, I mean, you know, these European countries went into countries and literally put people against each other, like Congo. They took one tribe and made them like the like the police, African police, something like that, right? They made them a police force and say, okay. look, you know, basically we'll give you certain rights and take care of you, mm. but you essentially need to help us enslave your own people. So it's almost mm. like a proxy war, like they do now, but 300, 400 years ago, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and so, you know, we got, you know, most of the resources on earth are in, think about Africa, like the most resource rich places are the poorest. The Congo was Wakanda, basically. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, so for us, I think that we we kind of got brainwashed for literally, you know, four or five generations to compete with each other. So in corporate offices, I feel as like, look, you know, there's something they always say at corporate offices or, you know, it's like a unsaid rules. It's like, you know, only one black person is going to get it. Like if there's five VPs, there's only going to be one black VP. Wow. So when you create that situation, it's a vacuum of crab in a barrel syndrome. I need to get it so we can be cool, but like. I have to backstab you to get it, I'm gonna get it because only one of us can get it. And sure. that's something that still exists to this day, unfortunately, you know? Mm. Um, so that, that's what I would say on that, man. It's unfortunate. Um, I think I think we're getting out of it, but it's yeah. if it took 500 years to put us like that, it's gonna, it might take another 500 to get out of it, man, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, everybody's gotta answer to God. So I think as long as we're all doing our part, yeah. the real life, which is the afterlife, which is, you know, heaven and whatever that entails, yeah. will be good. Um, but it's unfortunate. That's that goes back into the economic development piece. Yeah, it isn't like we can't handle our own business. Yeah, we just aren't in the situation, the opportunity to do it. Mm. You know? That's true. So I want to like I want to encourage you guys to like ask me questions. So like some of the some of the things like you guys say you may not like realize it or not, but it's like I may not like if it's if we're at the ladder mm -hmm. and somebody is talking and they like ask a question and they say something and it's like really what's going on in my life? I'm just <laughs> like, you know, I'm gonna just take it on the chin, like, mm. y'all probably see my face when I'm like, oh. yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, that's not with me. If I'm, if, yeah. if I don't say anything at the yeah. ladder, that means you're speaking about me. Yeah, that's yeah. why, we're, that's why we were silent today. Yes, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, yes. yeah, man. So y'all like, feel free to like ask me questions as well. Like this, this is not just an inter me interviewing okay. you guys. So you're an, like, you're an athlete. Yeah. Okay. So, um. Two things. One, All right. what's your take on the Antonio Brown situation? Do you think that he has a mental situation going on? Do you think that he kind of let his ego get to him? Do you think he just has issues that are stacking up and causing him to lash out? Because yeah. if you look at the history of it, you actually think back to kind of like his older days. Yeah. I was a big Antonio Brown fan. I still think yeah. he's a good guy. I think he's just going through stuff. Now, yeah. what he's been doing is not acceptable. It's not, True. you know, uh, I think that he needs to change what he's doing. But he's young enough to where he can change that, come back finish off his Hall of Fame career and be good. But what do, you, what do you think is going on with him right now? I think he took a, a few too many hits. I'm going to be honest. That perfect hit, man. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> to I'm head. serious. I think he took a few too many hits. But, like, obviously, like, he's standing up for himself and, like, his right to speak on how he feels about certain situations. Like, it's always going to be frowned upon when somebody chooses to do that. I agree. You know, especially a black man. Like, in a position like he is, influential, uh, already, like, 
like you said, Hall of Fame career. Mm-hmm. Hall of Fame career already. Numbers um, crazy. Numbers stupid. Yeah. Numbers are stupid. And now you're speaking out, like, like whoa. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. they don't necessarily um, – I don't necessarily like want to give him the power uh, to make other athletes feel like they can do the same thing. Especially in the NFL. Yeah. Imagine if every athlete on every team does that. Because they see in the you NBA. I mean? I mean, the NBA, the players shift. I mean, Kawhi Leonard literally. So Thanos. The, <laughs> Thanos. The, 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 <laughs> the owner of the Clippers said, and Doc Rivers said that. So I'm a Seattle Sonics fan. So shout out to the Sonics. Yeah. I'm waiting for y'all to come back. Ah, when you come you back, I will do whatever I have to do to get a court side seat. The yeah, game. that's where KD you know, got drafted. That's what, man, that was my senior year of high school. Uh, and he got drafted. Hurt. I oh, went to like hurt. five games. I remember. Did when, you, uh, bro? I remember when they announced they're moving to Sonics. I feel like I didn't have school. Like even our teachers are downtown protesting, bro. It was a, I mean, like it was a big, big deal. deal. Like we won a championship Durant, before, yo. you know what I mean? And then we then we drafted Russ. <sighs> oh my, I was so excited. I didn't know he oh, got drafted by the Because remember, we were going through. We we're like last place. Hey, did they draft Russ too? Yeah, yes. that's what I, was, I didn't know that. Don't, just think of the Thunder. <laughs> the Thunder was basically the Sonics. They got moved. It was a whole little. Sonic Gate. There's a movie y'all can watch about that. You know? So everything that happened to the Thunder, I thought it was karma. Honestly, you know, like uh. you can't steal our team and the players. I think you're going shit. How'd you go from mm. Seattle to Oklahoma? Money. There's nothing. I don't mean that nothing against Oil. all the Oklahoma Money. people. You know? Money. Money. Yeah. Money talks. You know, but um, yeah, but yeah, man. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it at that, man. Shout out to the Sonics. <laughs> <laughs> you think they'll be back? Uh huh. Yeah. Oh yeah, my bad. But um, yeah. Yeah. Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, they actually said that if he didn't come, which required Paul George coming, they were going to strongly consider moving the Clippers to the to the you know, back, basically bringing the Sonics back because the owners should, from Seattle man. they should man. But like, it's just crazy how many things go. he changed yeah. without talking, <laughs> without saying a he word. Even talk. I didn't even know his voice sounded like until a year ago. <laughs> Yo, Steve Ballmer, not oh, Kawhi. Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi. But yeah, Steve Ballmer was like you know strongly considering moving the team back to uh, yeah. to Seattle, and Kawhi Leonard literally shifted the whole league. I mean. If he didn't go to the West, the, the Lakers would almost have a clear shot with all these injuries going clear on and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. You know? How do y'all feel about that? So, okay, like, obviously, we just spoke about Antonio Brown, who's, like, loud and, like, you know, everything that he's, he feels he's going to say. Uh-huh. Kawhi don't say nothing. Yeah. And, like, he just changed the whole league. Yeah, he stays in his line, though. So that's who he was. Yeah. That's who he's been. If he was yeah. changing who he was to act like he's not, we, he'd be phony. It'd be mm. pretty obvious, you know? Yeah. So I applaud him for staying who he is, living his life. He keeps his mm-hmm. family life pretty personal. Um, but you can tell, like, this is who I am. If you don't like me, it's okay. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> I'm um, going to win a trip paid. anyway. This is why yeah. I'm getting these max checks. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I'm not even on social media. So if you're talking, I won't even see it. So let me go by. I'll be in my yacht. I appreciate that. AB, he's a flashy guy, and it helps his brand, right? So I can, I'm can i cool with him doing that, but when you kind of get the arrogance and the – that stage, yeah. it only works against you. Even if, because like his point he's making is right, but he's just going about the wrong way. Because okay. I mean, think about it. He commanded to leave the Steelers. Yeah. I don't like how, you know, he kind of, but he left. He got what he wanted. Yeah. And then he commanded to get more guaranteed money. Yeah. That's the biggest issue NFL players have. And the CBA is coming up. So if he had done it, a little more maybe, you could say poise, mm-hmm. you know, that would be huge. You got what he wanted. That'd be huge. I mean, Kirk Cousins just got a fully guaranteed contract a couple years ago. The two players that like got they wanted kind of it didn't pan out like you wish it would. Not at you know? all. Kirk Cousins he's playing good right now, so maybe okay. we'll work out. You know, yeah. but um, I'm, I'm a fan of his own contract too, right? Richard Ooh. Sherman. Yeah, he did. Awesome. he did. So I'm I'm a, I'm a fan of that man because it holds teams accountable. Because think about it, man. Like half the team. I mean, like the teams that have not won ships. Yeah. It's just it's it's very you know this team's been bad since I was born. Yeah. Have the Bengals ever been to a Super Bowl? I don't know. Maybe Super Bowl two. I thought, I thought Chad was going to do it, man. I thought he was. <laughs> so I'm going to shift gears, y'all. So I'm going to talk about tools for a second. And uh, y'all just feel free to say. So I'm going to say some some tools. And, like, you have a tool. Mm-hmm. You spoke about his tool earlier. Tell him what, oh, his, oh, tell him what his tool is. Oh. My name is Idris Elba. <laughs> <laughs> your accent, Can man. You like, to your crumpets? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. Like, take your shoes off in the house. That's me. <laughs> yo, not like I'm so serious, man. Uh, tools, like I feel like God blessed me with a tool. Just my presence, being tall, um, like learning how to speak. Like, obviously, you speak well. You have an unbelievable accent, bro. That is a tool. Um, light skin is a tool. I, am, are we being honest? It's true, though. It's yeah. true. Are we being yeah, honest? Definitely, man. It's true. Look at Dom. Dom said, I don't know. 
So I got it like that. Dom said, I don't skin. know. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dark skin is also a tool. Dark skin is Dark also skin is, a tool. Yes. Yeah, but we we talking corporate America, like okay, you know, yeah. corporate America. I'm still a brother, though. Yeah. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> hey, but, of you, course. but you know, but some you know, yeah. corporate America might come off as a little less non-threatening or less threatening. You know, I might walk in a room. I might just, I might have a smirk. threatening black. Yeah. yeah, threatening black. Yeah, you know, Eng uh, non-threatening black. The English accent goes a long way for me in, in corporate America. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. it's it's just it's, it's yeah. Idris. It's it, come in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you want yeah. some water? No, no it, it yeah. does, man. I, I I think it's it's people get lost in the in the language so much they don't even know what I'm talking. Like they don't even <laughs> listen yeah. to what I'm saying. Like I'm just being honest. Who know? is who is people? Just, just, <laughs> I mean, just just like interviewers. I mean, women like interviewers, yeah. but just in general. Like I mean, yeah. I'm not saying I'm a dumb person. Obviously, I, I went to oh, school, got my degree and stuff, but. Yeah. It's just yeah, like they, they they get lost in the sauce. Hey, for you, man, it's the icing on the cake. I'm trying to tell you, man. <laughs> they, they get lost yeah. in the sauce. If I had that kind of sauce, <laughs> if I had yeah. just if I had a, if I had your accent, I'd be talking everywhere I go. <laughs> I walk in a grocery store. Hello, Yo, how you doing? You yeah, good? Okay. Just exercising hey, it. Hey, where's the apples? All oh, right here. Oh, I didn't yeah. see it. My I bad. Damn near be Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> could. Like, that could be a job for you, yo. Yeah, like no, literally, your voice. You, you could be the voice speaker on your account of software. I, I guess it's just I, I I know what it can do. Yeah. Because I've 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 used it in okay. college. I, I used it. Yeah. And uh, I just explain I, use. I'm playing. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, bro. Can, we, can we talk about that? One? <laughs> <laughs> I used it to my advantage. So I know yeah. what it can do. Uh, yeah. But for me, it's like I want to get it off my own merit. So that's okay. why I don't I don't pump it up too much. If you get to yeah. know me, you'll hear it. But I mean, it's yeah. a bit worn down. It's not as strong as it used to be. But yeah, I use nah, it. man, I, I would encourage you to use okay. it. And uh, it's pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Other hey, than but, just the okay, go ahead. I was gonna say that's why people respect you, though, man. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying you don't walk around just living off of you know one tool God gave you. Like it's the icing on the cake yeah. for real. For real. Exactly. So I respect yeah. that a lot, man. Because you know, great yeah. power, great responsibility. For real. True. <laughs> AP, what would, what would you say, like, a tool of yours is that you kind of like, I don't want to say you rely on, but you know that in the, in the time of need, this is your, this is um, your, your tool. So it's probably not going to be what you're thinking, man, but okay. I would say judgment. Okay. I feel like I always know what the right decision to make is. And when yeah. I say right, I don't mean, like, if there's a Rubik's Cube, I know to change it. But I feel like in a moment, I know what the decision to make is. Like, in a split-second decision, yeah. I know what the – the right thing to do is maybe the good thing or the moral thing to do is and i feel yeah. like that's always kind of helped me and led me in the right direction you know okay. even when i've slipped up and fallen if i mess up i feel like most people know that i'm not being malicious got you it. know what i mean i'm not doing that so i think judgment i got that from my mom for sure yeah and i tell you this if i try to go against it mm -hmm. god definitely goes you know convicted yeah mm. no 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 Big like, you, slap. Know, you know better slap no better so I like that. it's not a british accent but it's, it's got me here too you know so yeah Maybe you don't feel like your your accent is your tool. Do you feel like there's like oh, no, something it's, else? It's, it's definitely it's 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 a big tool. But right. I mean, I feel for me, I'm just yeah. I'm just a realist. Like I try not yeah. to hold anything back. If you ask me something, I'm an open book. Yeah. So I just I just try to be I just try to be as transparent with people as I can. Yep. I guess. Yep. But you obviously have to ask, you have to come up to my space and ask me. Yeah. I'm just gonna give it to you. Okay, so so uh, let's let's speak about influences and uh, you know people that just like we, we aspire you know to be like or not necessarily aspire to be like aspire to to impact in a similar way that they did. I know Don's with Steve Stout and uh, and a couple other people. I was like uh, Jamie Fox, you know, just multi talented. Um, what are the, what are those for you guys? What else? Man, there's so many people. Yeah. Like, like, this one, like, uh -huh. It was three. It was mine, three. Mine isn't really. Top two? Top, top two. two. Let's go. You want to go for it? I'm, I'm going to give one. You can give one. Okay, cool, cool. One. So, man, one person I'm definitely going to say is Nipsey Hussle. And I feel like a lot of people would probably say that. But, like, yeah. so I was a really big Nipsey fan from back in the day because, like I said, okay. he's made beats and stuff. So, like, I. From Bullets ain't got no net. Man, right. look, man. So I like, I like, I like rappers on the come up because that's like authentic. Yeah. You get deals, get money. Sometimes it changes. He never yeah. really changed, and yeah, he lives a good life. Nice house, nice cars. You know, got some jewelry like he can. Cause he beautiful wife, money. beautiful wife, but child. But yeah. he always reinvested in his community, and that goes back to like I said, the economic development. 
from that, I was I, bro, I watched every single interview he had. Okay. So I mean, I remember I've read like three or four books because mm-hmm. he always drops books. So every time he has an interview, Ooh. of course he's talking about music, but he's always dropping gems, and it's it's good because he doesn't force feed it to you. It's like if you're watching, it's because you're my fans. True. This is what I did along the way. Do you know what I mean? Um, so. I would first one I'm gonna say is definitely Nipsey Hussle, man. R.I.P. Rest in peace. The big thing I'll say, man, is he's got he put out so much material that it will be 21, 20, and kids are still gonna be watching or whatever holographic yeah. monitor. They'll be watching Nipsey Hustle. That's true. Origin videos, whatnot. So um, hopefully they make a Nipsey. movie about his life. Have to, man. Yeah. You know, he, he even All talks right. about going back and yeah. when he went to air, uh, to Ethiopia, yeah, seeing his family and kind of came back and was Shout like, out to the Ethiopia. Shout out to the Ethiopia, man. Nation, shout out to Habasha Nation, Habasha Nation. Take our big Habasha Nation, man. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to y'all, man. Um, uh, so yeah, that's like my first one. All right, and my first one, honestly, I'm, I'm boring, but my first one's my dad. Okay, because uh, hey. he he just he's he's not you know he's not the richest guy. He doesn't have yeah. it all, whatever. But for him, I've seen him go up and down, up and down, up and yeah. down throughout life. Yeah, and like the way he's bounced back every single time is inspiring, man. Yeah, because there was there was points where we didn't have nothing, but he still made it happen. Mm-hmm. So I, f- I feel like you can't really. I mean, it's it's and and my, the next person that influences me is obviously for all the you know they're very successful and stuff like that. Yeah. But for life lessons and stuff like that, yeah. and my dad is not someone that talks. Yeah, like he's not he's not someone that's gonna sit you down and tell you do this do this do this. Yeah. You just kind of see the ex- his example. He puts his family first before anything, yeah. before himself. Like this, like we have to literally dad go buy a new shirt because yeah. he just focused on his family first. Like, get them clothes, make sure they go to the best school. Blah 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 blah. So, yeah. and, uh, you were born in Brooklyn. Yeah, in New York, Brooklyn. Not a lot of people know. Right. Like that. Tell, tell people where you lived, man. So when when I first when I was first born, we used to live in the Trump Tower. Oh wow! Yeah. So Look my dad. dad, he had it made. Look at that. Yeah. Ching. yeah he was, <laughs> when I say when I, like when Trump my mom Tower. tells me the story about when we were first when I was first born and stuff like that, I was like, damn, what happened? <laughs> yeah. And so like you know, I mean that was a good period in our life, and then you know I don't want to put him out there or whatever. Sorry, dad. But yeah. like he he lost everything. Yeah. And so it just seeing that bounce back and it, it's it's cyclical. It's happening. It's biz ups. There's downs or whatever. So yeah. it's just inspiring to see from the grind. It's just a grind, bro. Man, so I really man. appreciate you saying that, yeah. bro. Uh, my dad definitely gave me, if anything, just discipline, mm-hmm. uh, respect, and uh, just work ethic, man. Like, my dad woke up at 5.30 to go to work every day, yeah. yo, and I was just <laughs> he, I can't imagine. Like, exactly. I, just, I just couldn't imagine, bro. He did manual labor, like, construction. Um, he had a life before that, which mm-hmm. he provided for us. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't... Um, you guys can kind of understand, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> and it provided very well for yeah, us, one you know two. what I mean? <laughs> provided for us very well. And, you know, he just decided that he didn't want to do that anymore and just, you know, just took a job and mm-hmm. really just did uh, honest, honest manual labor. And uh, that's been with me, just like work ethic, work ethic. You know, if I don't have anything, like I know that I could just work for it yeah. at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So, man, my dad, dad, I remember when I was growing up, man, like, uh, it's funny because I, I, back when I was a kid, I was like, why is he doing this? But like, let's say I needed money to get a book, of, a school book, I mean, a book of school. Like, All right, that. put on a spreadsheet. <laughs> he working <laughs> he for that. Yeah, he's like, put, no, he was like, put on a spreadsheet. Okay. So I learned how to use Excel and I was like, before I didn't really know how to use like any other stuff on the computer. That's a so, dope skill to pick up. That's crazy because you know, I'm doing my MBA yeah. right now and <laughs> I'm doing an analytics concentration. Okay. Half of it is using Excel yeah. Minor, <laughs> d- uh, data analytics tool pack. Yeah. At work, one of the reasons why like, I'm in the position I'm in now. We use a lot of different spreadsheets. I got to do financial sheets because I do contracts, right? So, okay. you know, if I'm doing a contract and it's a $9 million contract, we got to make sure the, dot, the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted. We're gonna, okay. Our margin's going to be there over the contract or whatnot. So mm-hmm. all these skills that I use now, I thought it was just, you know, being hard, which it was, but, <laughs> you know, everything, it, it worked out for me, you know, like shaking yeah. hands, you know. If I shake somebody, if I shook his hand, it wasn't hard enough, no. I, I hate might the be fish. grounded. Yeah, I man. hate the fish, man. <laughs> Eye contact. Yeah, you know, and it's crazy because like even I was interviewing for my job. You know, when I first got out of school and stuff. They were like, good handshake, mm-hmm. made eye contact, yeah. skills, and I'm just like, man. If y'all knew, I was in boot camp and I was like, hey, oh <laughs> man. Oh, <laughs> but it, man. it all worked out, right? I'm gonna do the same thing with my kids. It did, man. So. Responsibilities, chores, just little things. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Spreadsheet. I'm, I'm gonna have to take that one. Hey, I'm trying to tell you, man. Yeah. No, it's, it's I'm powerful. taking that. One. <laughs> <laughs> Spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> you want them J's? All right. All right. I'm on the no yeah. <laughs> No, I'm where I am because I took Excel yeah. seriously. Yeah, that's it's bro. Excel. I actually is like it. Powerful, man. It's yeah, powerful. I, I'll be like anything. I made like my uh, budget sheet one okay. night, and I probably sent it to like 15 people. Yeah, just cause like you know I put I got my check coming in savings. Uh, everything down to my Netflix bill on there. So wow. now I'm now I'm a stickler. Yeah, got it. Now I'm well, a stickler. Frugal. Even my even okay. my, yeah, I'm pretty yeah, I'm yeah. frugal. So are you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I'm <laughs> the most frugal now. <laughs> yeah, but I think frugal is being frugal is dope because that's how you can, you know, like for instance, I tore my patella um, right when I moved up to North Carolina. Okay, so Dallas having fun. If I had been saving money, I mean, the amount of racks. Yeah. That went into PT and the surgery, even with good insurance, man. Like, yeah. I was sitting here like, no wonder you see that homeless person walking down the street that has that hard limp. Can't. He probably needs ten thousand dollars to have with insurance yeah. to have the operation. He doesn't have insurance. I mean, my surgery before insurance was like would have been like twenty two thousand dollars. Wow. So you can yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. I would think I had insurance, but yeah. if I didn't have insurance. It would have been like a Honda Accord to fix my knee. It's crazy. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's important, bro. Sa- saving and just having that. Bro, I smile every time I know I got it, and yeah. something just comes up. Say, say it again, yeah. please. Can you say it again, please? I smile every time I know yeah, I got it. That's our first I album. I smile every time I know I got it. I smile every time I know I got it. I every time I know I got it. I remember it. Like, Yo. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sir. After my, internship, <laughs> after my internship at Deloitte, like, I just made a bunch of money from my internship, and yeah. I remember I, I was meant to go to, on a flight somewhere. I can't remember where it, it was, too, but yeah. I showed up a day late. Mm-hmm. So I got there. And my flight was it had left the day before, mm-hmm. and the dude was Swipe. like, "All right, it's gonna cost this this much." Swipe, yeah, no seven hundred. Swipe. It, it's a good feeling to know that it's because you know, because I, I, I mean, all the other kids they were blowing their money at bars and all that kind of stuff. Sure. I was just like, I'm gonna put something to the side, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. a good feeling, bro. Yeah. <laughs> all the baby gals out there, the baby gal, give, give, give yeah. it, give it, Marlon, you got you. Stability, stability, you know. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, stability. Yeah. You guys, are you guys uh, dating? <laughs> huh? What? I gotta throw it out there, man. Huh? You know, you know. What? <laughs> oh, you oh, man. <laughs> hey, don't answer that question, y'all. Right, don't answer, answer it. it. I gotta answer it, man. I think I, think I need some more water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got your answer, y'all. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. No, I'm I'm currently single. All right. I'm enjoying just just uh just being. Growing myself, yeah, you know, not complicating my life right yeah. now. I'm currently so. walking in my singleness, my singleness, trying yeah. to do it the right way. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm dating. Um, you know, I'm trying to meet people, whatnot, but try to do it the right way, man. Try to be mm-hmm. patient, do it the right way. All right. Um, final answer. Mm. All right, Stony. So you're the only one of us in here married. Um, Congratulations, Stony, bro. I I, re- I really uh, and I got you, you bro. Oh yeah, dope. I I really just want you to come over here and like just bless us with uh like your walk with your your relationship with your wife and like what that marriage means to like you and your life. You could like pull your yeah. chair over, bro. Yeah, go go uh, pull it to the table, my brother. It's told the story over, about like the, the you, list you and writing it all down. And Track three. I feel yeah. like that's <laughs> featuring that. Stony. Shout out to Kier, <laughs> man, for real. Man, um, so I love shoes. Got it. So I'm in Foot Locker one day, and I'm like, just like trying on some Air Max 97s. Mm. Hey, and, uh, metallic or which which ones? No, nah, they were just like red and white. Red and white. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Trying to get the picture visual. Right. Bro, I see this beautiful couple. Like the guy was a handsome guy, yeah. and his wife was just gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And they're like 70. All right. Like. Well, super old. Yeah. Also, <laughs> yeah. I was in the I mean, well aged. Bro. <laughs> they're in, they're in Foot Locker trying to at night. What are they doing in Foot Locker? They're trying to. They're trying to. Maybe the Cortez. New Balance. Trying to get some heat. <laughs> oh, they can't get no store. heat. Bro, they're serious, this is Obama. Bro. Trying on Cortez, bro. I mean, that's, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? That dope. That's what I want to be. Well, where are they? You can get them here, <laughs> bro. So I'm, I walk over to them and like I'm, I'm big on relationships and stuff like that. Um, I walk over to him. I just ask, like, man, you guys are a beautiful couple. If you don't yeah. mind me asking, like, how long have you guys been married? And the guy looks at me, and he looks at his wife, and he's like, oh, about 45 years. Wow. wow. Yeah. And um, I was like, how? 
You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, how's that even possible? Yeah, you know what I'm so. saying? Because my pops, like, he got married like three times. So that's all I knew was just okay. divorce. So I'm like, yeah. how'd you guys do it? And he doesn't even know me. He, like, puts his arm around me. He's like, young man, pray over the things that you want a woman. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it sounds cliche, but talk to me. Like, I'm listening. Yeah. He says, pray over the things that you want a woman. Make a list of the things that you want and pray over those things daily. And he's like, don't just do the surface level things. Like, you know, we like big boobs and big booties. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you want that, for sure, put that on the list. But, like, <laughs> don't let it be surface. Like, yeah. do the, pray over the things like, like a good heart, the things that you can't buy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm like, dang. I, I, I bought my shoes, walked out of Foot Locker, and I was still thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, dang, okay. So I went home and made that list. You know what I'm saying? And for two years straight, I was like wilding, like partying, talking to different women, slept with a couple. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, um, but I was still like praying over that list. I got home from a party one time, super drunk. It was like God just like punched me in the stomach. It was like stop, like enough. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, whatever it is that you want me to do, I'll do. You know what I'm saying? Like, and just like was for real about it, bro. I prayed over that list. Not even like, and at that point, I was like solely focused on like school and like yeah. um, just working and just yeah. ready to graduate. Um, not even a month. It's not even a month after that had happened. Mm-hmm. She comes walking into the store that I used to work at. And so she walks in. I'm like, dang, she's gorgeous. But I'm not sweating her at all because I just yeah. had this encounter with a guy. Like, I'm not even worried about females. Like, yeah, yeah, you bad, but I'm not even thinking about you. Well, I meet her the first day that she moves to Dallas. So I'm like one of the first people she knows. Yeah. And um, it just kind of went from there. Like, I hung out with her one day. She called her sister, and she was like, girl, I met my future husband. Mm. On the third day, I knew that. That was the one that I've been praying for. Like, God revealed to me, like, that's her. So, yeah. Shout out, God. Shout out yeah. to her. It's crazy, crazy, bro. Shout out God. That's God. a good testament, yeah. man. That's a real Shit. testament. Hey, man. Uh, yeah. Shout out to God, man. Shout out to love. Shout out to love. Man, I've actually been waiting on you. How you playing? I'll just slide in some DMs real quick. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, hey, hey, there's love in the DMs yo. too, though. No, that's not. Is that love in the like, DMs? She sent me a DM, bro, and just kind of started from there. Wow. Yeah. Send there is love in the fire DMs. Off. That's a All track right, right there. With, with Stoney's blessing, fire it off. <laughs> no, love in the DMs. That's a track right there. Yeah, that's that's, that's a yep. track. That's another one on so the that's track that's gonna be like the crossover R&B chicks type. Yo, type I'm on that. Chick tape. Yeah, yeah. 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 on that. I'm on that. Chick tape six. Yo, man, we got a, we got like three minutes left, man. Just feel free to say like whatever y'all want to say, one line, whatever. Just you know, thank y'all. I appreciate y'all coming out here, you know, sharing y'all stories, speaking it, speaking it out to you know to the world. Just whatever else y'all want to say, man. Just go man, ahead. appreciate being on here. Big shout out to the ladder. Shout out to everyone, man. Shout out to the. The face the world clothing line too, man. Yeah. I'm super cozy right now. Yeah. Um, but you know, last thing I'm gonna say, man, is just blessings to everybody. Everybody, you know, find your purpose. Um, I think you'll be happier if you're going in the right direction. There's a lot of things that are fun, but like at some point in time you're gonna find out that all distractions and I'm still moving in that direction, so I'm not here, I'm not the monk or anything here talking to y'all, man. I'm doing the same the thing. Monk. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm not a bishop. I'm just yeah. I'm just trying to, you know, communicate y'all what I am finding out for myself too. So yeah. you know, man, find a purpose, touch other people, be the best you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Really? Mine's just yeah. Drink more water. Drink more water. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, drink your smoothies. Say hell. <laughs> now, mine's yeah, if you're if you're a young professional, you know, you feel like you're going through things, you need guidance, come to the ladder. Come to the ladder, man. Come to the ladder. Come to the ladder. Yeah. Just look on someone's Instagram over here. You'll see something tagged mm-hmm. or whatever. Look, man, we got coffee, kolaches, kolaches good, donuts, pizza, holes. good vibes, energy, a nice bougie townhouse. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> we got slight. everything. Something slight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and shout out to my stepmom. Because hey, that's, step that's my spiritual guidance right there. So. Yeah. And mm-hmm. shout out to okay. Trinidad, specifically, yeah. you know, Cuba, Claxton Bay, Port of Spain, everybody, all my family over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to everybody, man. I'll be there around Christmas. <laughs> Have the roti ready for me, please, you know. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, for me, man, it's just, honestly, if, if you listen to this, just knowing that you have purpose and that you were created for some, uh, and if you're feeling like you were created for more, then you definitely are. And so just kind of think about that and take time to really think about the things that 
um, that you actually want to do because sometimes we get so busy in doing things that society tells us to do or True. we're worried about a paycheck when um, it's always some deeper. So mm. I would say just kind of dig deep down and kind of think about that and um, find a good community of, of people that you can hang around with and talk to and do life with. That's true. Yeah. Dom, man, get over here, man. Dom. <laughs> I'm spitting my bite. You <laughs> um, got the mic. Oh, man. It's so much <laughs> I always want to say. Um, I'm going to keep it short to this, Dom. I would just say, you know, stay in tune to how you're feeling, most importantly, uh, especially the people around you. It's so important, man. It, it has the only way I'm able to do life every single day is I, I pay attention to how I'm feeling when I wake up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I pray on it. I move accordingly, mm-hmm. you know. And other than that, just stay fly. You know? Hey, always stay fly. Yes, sir. Something's hey. <laughs> 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 Shout out to the stand-up. Shout out to the baby with this beat. Get the rebound.